Energy isn't something you can hold in your hand. It's just an idea. It's a number that tells us what will happen when objects interact in what we call a system. Total energy in any interaction between objects is always conserved. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Now, there is a small caveat with that, as energy can be turned into matter, mass, but it's still technically true. The whole mass to energy thing is only important when it comes to nuclear fission and fusion. Energy is measured in joules. There are what some people call different stores of energy. Normal people just say types of energy, but these days the exam boards are obsessed with the word stores, so that's what we're going to have to use. The amount of energy in these energy stores changes when objects interact. An object can have energy in the following stores. Kinetic energy, we calculate that with half mv squared, that's half times mass in kilograms times speed or velocity squared. If an object goes faster, it now has more kinetic energy. Gravitational potential energy, or GPE for short, we calculate that with MGH. That's mass in kilograms times gravitational field strength. Some people just say gravity, try not to say that. And that's either 10 or 9.8 newtons per kilogram, that is. You'll be told which to use in a question. That's times by height. Well, really, we should say change in height in meters. Technically, this only really gives you a change in GPE, as nothing on the Earth can have zero GPE. So this H here is actually just a change in height, but that's fine. Put simply, the higher off the ground an object is, the more GPE it has. And the more GPE it has available to lose if it starts to fall. Elastic potential energy is what is stored in, say, a spring. That's equal to half Ke squared. That's half times the spring constant in newtons per meter, sometimes called stiffness, times extension. That's how much further the spring has stretched from its original length. Thermal energy, or change in thermal energy, is calculated with the SHC equation. This energy is equal to mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change in degrees Celsius. That's E equals mc delta T. That delta, the triangle, just means change in, so that's change in temperature here. The C stands for SHC, and that stands for specific heat capacity. This tells you how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. It's different for every substance. We don't really talk about sound or vibrational energy, as this is just particles moving, so in reality, that's just kinetic energy. Chemical potential energy, say in food or fuels, there's no real equation for that, so that's more chemistry's remit, but you might have to mention it at some point that these two things do have a store of chemical potential energy. In order for anything to happen in a system, energy must be transferred from one object to another or from one store to another. In a closed system, no energy is lost to the surroundings and no energy comes in from the surroundings either. So that means we can equate two lots of energy. This just means that we can say one lot of energy is equal another. For example, a roller coaster car held at the top of a ride just has GPE, gravitational potential energy. It doesn't have kinetic energy yet. But when it's let go and it starts to roll down the track, GPE is lost. Where does it go? It's turned into kinetic energy. OK, we should really say that its GPE store is decreasing and its kinetic energy store is increasing instead. But all that really matters is that at the bottom, it's lost that GPE using this height here. So we can say GPE lost equals kinetic energy gained. GPE equals Ke. So if it had this many joules of GPE at the top, it must have the same number of joules at the bottom, but now that's kinetic energy. We can then rearrange the kinetic energy equation to find its speed, for example. By the way, I always recommend rearranging equations using symbols, not words. So here I want to make V the subject. I want it by itself. So to move something from one side of an equation to the other, we just do the opposite with it. To get rid of the half, we double both sides. That gets rid of the half and the other side is doubled. We've done the opposite with it. Then to get rid of the mass from the right hand side, well, we're multiplying by it on the right. So we just divide by it on the left and that gets rid of it. Finally, to get rid of the square on the V, we square root the other side. So it turns out V is equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Then we just pop in our numbers, punch it into our calculator, and boom, we've got our answer. You could also have to equate elastic potential energy and kinetic energy, say if a toy car with a spring in is pulled back and let go. By the way, there is a shortcut for the whole GPE to kinetic energy scenario. If we just equate these two equations, you'll notice that mass M is on both sides, so they actually cancel out. By rearranging this, we find that V is equal to the square root of 2GH. So really, we only need to know the height from which something falls in order to know its speed at the bottom. It doesn't matter how heavy it is. 
If you have to rearrange the GPE equation, just remember that the two things you have to move from the right-hand side have to go on the bottom of the left-hand side, multiplied together, and we might want to use brackets. You could get a situation where, for example, the roller coaster has more GPE at the top than kinetic energy at the bottom. Where's the rest of the energy gone, you might ask? Well, it must have been lost to the surroundings, so that means it cannot be a closed system. This could be due to work done against air resistance or friction. Work is just another word for energy used, by the way. Power is just the rate of energy transferred. Any rate is a change in something divided by time. In this case, that's energy divided by time. So here's the equation, P equals E over T. The unit for power is W for watts, but this is just the same as joules per second. So my laptop has a 200 watt power supply, which just means that it uses 200 joules of energy per second. To find out how much energy it uses in a minute, we just rearrange this equation so E is equal to P times T. So then that's 200 watts times 60 seconds. Efficiency is a measure of how much energy transferred is used usefully, and it also works with power too. Let's say that my power supply actually only supplies 120 watts of useful power to the laptop, even though it uses 200 watts altogether. So its efficiency is 120 divided by 200, which is 0.6 as a decimal. If we multiply that by 100, we turn it into a percentage. That means it's 60% efficient. That means that 40% of the power or energy going in is wasted, and it's usually as heat loss to the surroundings. If houses or other buildings don't have sufficient insulation, a lot of heat can be lost through walls, windows, doors or the roof etc. We can do a practical on this by wrapping up cans with different insulating materials or different thicknesses of the same material. We pour hot water in from a kettle and measure the temperature after a certain time. Energy sources are not the same as energy stores, rather energy sources are where we harness energy from the world around us. Finite or non-renewable sources include fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas all burned to create heat, for example in power stations to make electricity. Finite means that once used up, no more can be obtained. Nuclear fuel like uranium is also finite, although it wouldn't run out for a very long time. Renewable sources include wind power, hydroelectric power stations, both of these are used to turn generators to generate electricity, solar panels convert light directly into electricity, geothermal power stations involve water being pumped deep underground to be heated, and biofuel is the term for any biological matter that's burned to produce energy. So I hope you found that helpful, leave a like and a comment if you did, and click on the card to take you to the playlist for all of the papers, and don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge.